Hello everyone, today we are going to solve problem 100 of chapter 4. Replace the force system acting on the beam by an equivalent force and couple moment at point B. So we want to replace our beam with another beam that instead of having all these forces, we're going to have one, let's say, resultant force and one resultant moment here i'm just uh, randomly writing these force and uh, moments they could be in any direction and could have any magnitude because we don't have any coordinate i'm just going to draw a typical coordinate system x y so for these two beam to be equivalent the summation of forces in the beam on the right and on the beam on the left should be the same summation of the moment about point B also should be the same in both beams. So let's just start with summation of forces. So FR has two components, X and Y. The X component should be the same as summation of forces on the beam on the left. So summation of forces in X direction. Our force 2.5 kN will have a component in x, our 1.5 kN force is going to have a component in x, but our 3 kN force is not going to have any component in x. So our 2.5 component would be negative, so that would be negative 2.5. If I want to find the horizontal component, that would be 4 over 5. My fourth 1.5 kN will have a positive component in x direction and that would be sine 30. So at the end, the result would be negative 1.25 kN. So that's the x component of forces. Same thing for y component, summation of forces in y. In y uh, direction, all our forces are going to have a component. So for 2.5 would be 3 over 5 if we are interested in the vertical component. Then our 1.5 would be cosine 30. And our 3 kN fourth. So at the end we will have negative 5.8 kN. So these are the summation of forces in X and Y. If we want to find the resultant force, we use Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant force. So that would be FRX squared plus FRY squared. And then we get 5.93 kN. If I want to find the angle, it would be tangent inverse of the FRY component over FRX component, which will give me 77.8 degrees. But because these two values, both FRY and FRX, are negative, we know that our resultant force would be in the third quadrant. So if this is our xy, and if this is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third quadrant, because both frx and fry are negative, therefore our resultant force is in the third quadrant. And the angle that we find is technically this angle. So that would be our theta, because what we did, we divided by the y component over x component. The tangent inverse of the y over x will give us this angle. Our next task is to find the resultant moment. So the resultant moment that we are going to use should be the same as summation of moment about point B. We're going to assume counterclockwise to be positive. So let's see what forces are going to create a moment for us. For a moment at point B, our 3 kN is not going to create any moment because it doesn't have any moment. Our, our 1.5 kN, the 
y component is going to create a moment not the x component the x component will go through point b same thing for 2.5 kilonewtons. only the y component is going to create a moment and a point b both these forces are going to create a counterclockwise moment which means positive for us so we have two positive moment acting on our b for moment First, we need to find a y component, multiply by the moment r. So 1.5 cosine 30 will give us the y component. We are not done. We have to multiply by the moment r times 2. Plus, the other component is 2.5. If you want to find the y component or the vertical component, multiply by 3 over 5. Moment r is 6. So at the end, we have 11. 0.6 kilonewton meter and it's positive and we assume counterclockwise to be positive so this mom moment is counterclockwise so now we can replace our force and moment with a moment of this value 11.6 and a force of this value with this angle and our system, our two system would be equal because they have the same moment and the same force.